Feeling the funk on this Wednesday afternoon. Welcome in everybody. I'm Tyler Pyburn from Five Tool Productions. This is, in fact, Create Smarter. Really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Jump in with us and have some fun. Talk video, talk marketing, and all things in between and how they kind of relate to one another. But we've got a great show lined up for you today. We've got some kind of behind the scenes things. We've got some day in the life footage. We also have a wonderful interview lined up with some great folks at 3Play, which you'll find out a little bit more about them just coming up in a few minutes down the road. But also, we're going to be getting to the news, which you may have caught yesterday, but we'll show that a little bit later on as well. But before we do that, I did mention day in the life. So that is something new we're rolling out here at five tool and especially on the create smarter show and that is kind of a what's it like to be each person here at five tool production so you might see people you know a few different times and different days obviously have different things going on so we figured we'd start with phil and see what his day is like here at five tool let's take a look hey guys thanks for joining me for a, a day in the life video here today starting the day off at home give you a sense of what it's, uh, what it's like for a typical day in the life for me. Let's go. Joined as always by my trusty coworkers, Cash. And Callie. Hi guys. Are we gonna be loud today? We're gonna be quiet today. Pretty good so far. The best co-workers. The best. As you can see here, setting up for a look live program we have tonight. Checking some boxes. Got kind of a vmix set up here. Um, linked to my laptop in. You can see it's coming in there over NDI. You know we love NDI. There we are. Hey everyone, bringing everything together. This allows us to do remote calls, produce shows fully, um, all from here at home, which is pretty sweet. Of course, the home office, it's more than a little bit of a mess. Baby stuff and gear everywhere. Always gear everywhere, all over the house, which my wife absolutely loves. Jojo, peacefully swinging, swinging away in her swing allowing me to get some stuff done. All right, a little uh, change of scenery and costume change heading into the office for the afternoon. Got a live stream coming up um, this evening, a bunch of meetings to take care of this afternoon. So heading into the office to make it all happen. Thank you. Thanks so much, have a nice day. If you know, you know. of the day on a Thursday why wouldn't there be traffic there's always traffic it's Boston getting to the office for the day for the evening afternoon Kevin's already been here for a little while let's see how they're doing hi everyone hey. <laughs> how are you doing very good Great. about to set up in here in control room one with Josh, who's gonna walk us through the Stream Deck, which is a really cool little tool. Switcher board, basically totally customizable switcher board that we use for the vMix machine. All right, about to meet with Josh to talk about everything that has been going on this week and everything that is going on next week. Are you excited, Josh? Oh yeah. That's part of my week. <laughs> He's lying. He's lying. Near the end of the day here, people wrapping up. You know, trying to trying to keep it professional, trying to have a meeting and stuff, and it's just it's utter chaos out here. <laughs> I should note, it's a momentous day here in the Five Tool office. Big things happening. Um, not just because of the events we're doing, but because after much discussion and deliberation, finally, a picnic table. Always emailing, nonstop. Even when we're about to go pick up dinner, pizza to fuel us, to keep us alive. Tyler, 
always on the clock. His email. <laughs> always, always working. It's the life. Always working. Glorious, isn't it? So about 7.15, 7.30, you can see it on the screen behind me, NFLPA. That's who we're working with tonight, doing a live stream for Juneteenth. Look at this office pessimists, Tyler and Marissa. Got a new picnic table, I mentioned a momentous day in this company's history. And they believe that this table will be stolen in under 30 days. Let me ask you, how do you steal a picnic table? You gotta have tools, you gotta plan, you gotta have a truck. It's big! I'm walking away with a picnic table. All right, live stream's done, Tyler. How do you feel? Uh, pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. All right, right around 8.45 p.m. Long day, for sure. Um, definitely a good one, though. Um, really awesome to, to work on this event today. You know, like every day here at Five Tool, exciting. Uh, touching on a, about 15, 20 different projects in a day. Um, talking to a bunch of cool people and, and having fun along the way. So thank you for spending the day with me. See you next time. Always love spending the day with Phil. I've spent the day with Phil probably almost every day for the last five years straight. It's been wonderful to say the least. But thanks for him for, you know, recording his life, essentially, including JoJo and his wife, Kate. Great stuff as always. But, uh, you know, the one thing I will say I did notice there is we are exactly one month out from when he recorded that video. A month and a day. Which means that Marissa and I have actually lost that bet. It is more than 30 days since, you know, Phil recorded that and filmed it because it was on. <sighs> yeah, we are, uh, we, we messed up, Marissa. We lost. But anyways, we're going to move on with the show. Big thanks to Phil. We're going to keep going, though, right now. We have a great uh, segment coming up for you right now. We're going to bring Josh Artman into the conversation. Josh has a uh, really just a great guest lined up from 3Play, and they are just a, Kind of an awesome company, to be totally honest with you. We use them a lot for our closed captioning for just about every single video we produce out there. Um, they're pretty awesome, to say the least. So Josh is going to be talking about accessibility and closed captioning itself. So Josh, I'm going to welcome you in, and I'll let you bring it to the guest. Thanks so much, Tyler. Uh, really excited to be here. Uh, like you said, this is our featured guest segment here on Create Smarter. And in just a moment, I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest. We'll be talking with uh, Samantha Sald from 3Play Media. She works there as a uh, uh, content marketing associate. And uh, yeah, really excited to have her on. If you know me, I love captions and been learning a lot about accessibility myself. So Samantha, thanks so much for joining us today. I, I've heard uh, through the grapevine that it's actually the first day of being back in the office over at the 3Play offices. So how are you and how's the office? Thank you for having me. And yes, it's our first day back. It definitely feels kind of interesting and weird being back in the office after working from home for the past year and a half. So I have to learn how to uh, socialize again. <laughs> sure. Well, you're here, uh, you know, you're in person, but you're also joining us virtually. So once again, thanks so yeah. much. Um, just wanted to kind of cover our bases. You know, Tyler mentioned we love 3Play, we work with you a good amount for some of our captioning needs, but um, for those who aren't as in the know, uh, can you give a brief background on 3Play Media and uh, the services you provide? Certainly, yeah. So um, 3Play Media is a video accessibility company based in Boston, Massachusetts. And um, we were founded in 2007 by four MIT graduate students um, researching how to affordably make videos accessible through innovative technology. And today we offer um, premium closed captioning, live captioning, audio description, transcription, and um, subtitling solutions. And we work with thousands of customers across um, multiple industries, including education, media and entertainment, government and enterprise companies to make their videos more accessible, usable, searchable, and SEO friendly. And um, overall, we're a company that believes in the importance of making the web inclusive to all people, regardless of ability, and to provide an equal viewing experience without any barriers. Mm. Love to hear that. That's a really great mission. And like you said, you kind of get to that goal with a bunch of different services. 
Um, and I'm curious, of course, you know, I might know the answer, but for those of us who aren't as in the know about captions, the newest in the caption biz, you mentioned live captions and closed captions. Now, what's the difference there? Is, isn't everything just a caption? <laughs> no, so um, although they're similar, the difference between closed captions and live captions kind of depends on the type of video that you have. So um, one is used for pre-recorded videos and the other is used for video shown in real time. So um, closed captions are a time synchronized textual representation of the audio within a media file and um, they make video accessible to deaf and hard of hearing viewers by providing a text track as a supplement to or as a substitute for the audio. Um, and captions assume the viewer can't hear the audio, so they um, include relevant sound effects, speaker, speaker identifications, and other non-speech elements. So an example of this would be if um, you're watching a TV show and you see the character on screen opening um, their front door, um, if there's a sound of like keys jingling off screen, you would use that as a non-speech element and caption that. Um, and even though you can't see that on screen, the sound of that is pertinent to the, pop, to the plot of the TV show. So that would be captioned. And so live captions are pretty much the same as closed captions, except that closed captions are used for a pre-recorded video like um, a TV show or a film. And live captions are used for videos happening in real time like this show. And um, similarly to closed captions, um, live captions ensure that all your um, live events are accessible to deaf and hard of hearing individuals, as well as um, they make your um, content more engaging. So um, closed captions then can be created by um, manual transcription through a vendor or using automatic speech recognition. And then live captions are usually created by an automatic software or by a human stenographer. Hmm. Definitely a lot to digest there, but thank you for that kind of basic overview of the basic sure. differences with some of those captions. And I'm curious, um, you know, we know, we've looked at the data, we've looked at three plays data. Um, captioned videos get significantly more views than non-captioned videos. Now, I'm sure that's a couple of factors, but what, why do you think that is? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And there's so much data out there that shows that captioned videos are viewed more than non captioned ones. Um, the fact of the matter is that nowadays people consume video in a variety of ways. So for one, many people um, split their attention across several devices, including myself. <laughs> and that also just makes it more challenging for content creators to not only grab people's attention, but to keep it. Um, so captions have been proven to um, improve engagement, focus, and memory. And one study by the um, University of Iowa found that people recall information better when they see and when they hear it. So with so many videos competing for our attention, captions really help your videos to stand out amongst the rest and to keep people on your content for longer. Um, Facebook even found that captions increase um, viewership by 12%. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, additionally, many viewers are watching videos in sound sensitive environments. So um, some of us are watching videos in a really loud place or a really quiet place. And um, when viewers don't have access to sound or um, don't have access to headphones, captions still allow them to view videos without really missing a beat. And then um, finally, there are millions of people um, globally with hearing loss and captions give these viewers access to um, your videos and they're more likely to engage with your content if it's accessible. Hmm. And I can definitely vouch for that even just as someone, you know, on the couch watching Netflix. I don't need the captions, yeah. but sometimes it's nice just to have them on, uh, you know, like you said, uh, just if, if there's a lot of noise or sometimes I myself have trouble uh, maybe keeping up with what some of the characters are saying. And I think uh, yeah. I also heard that specifically with TV and some video games, they find that when they keep captions on by default, most people don't ever turn them off. So, you know, I think when we think about captions, we think, oh, that's for, you know, maybe very specific groups of people. But I think that gets to a great point of uh, captions being just kind of a universal tool for everyone. So that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think uh, this year, this past year, obviously, bunch of challenges, a bunch of adaptations from folks in the media, folks uh, kind of living online a little more. Um, and it really seems like we're going through a moment for live captions right now. 2021, the year of the live caption. Uh, what, what can you say about that? 
Yeah, so 2020 definitely brought about many changes um, that impacted the demand for video in 2021. And obviously, we all know that we saw, you know, unprecedented changes with the pandemic. Um, and one of the ways that it affected us is the way that we consume video. So with many of us, um, you know, staying in place at home, you know, we weren't able to really socialize with friends and family and colleagues in person. So it was really the next best thing. Um, and although it isn't exactly the same as in person, live videos, you know, they still allow you to see a person's face, to hear their voice and pick up on nuances just like you would in person. Um, and now, although things are slowly going back to normal, we can still expect for live video to stay, especially as more and more people incorporate um, hybrid environments with a combination of both in-person and virtual. Um, and live streams are really just the future. You know, there are a number of video apps that have um, incorporated live streaming like Facebook and Instagram, you know, YouTube, TikTok. I mean, the list really goes on. Um, and in order for your live streams to be accessible to a wider audience, it's imperative that you um, include live captions. So, you know, inclusion is really a buzzword that a lot of people have been talking about in the past year. And it's really more than just a trend. You know, people are really looking for ways to bring more people together and live captions um, can help make your content more inclusive and more accessible to a broader audience. Not, not only does it help um, users, with, users with disabilities, but it also helps users with um, a variety of learning styles and viewing preferences and um, viewers who are in sound sensitive environments and more. And, you know, by making your live streams accessible, you can make your content, you know, viewable to a wider audience and it ensures that all viewers, regardless of ability, can consume your, you know, your content in any environment. And that's, you know, always the end goal here with video, get in front of as many eyeballs and as many yes. ears as possible. So, no, that's, that's exactly. awesome. Um, and I'm wondering as well, uh, one thing that kind of surprised me a little bit, I'm, uh, I'm getting into captions. Uh, I've been helping Phil and Tyler here in the office sort of research some uh, ways to do captions and caption workflows. One of the things that surprised me the most in my research was just uh, I guess the FCC sort of weighing in on live captions. Can you talk about some of the newer laws coming in about uh, captioning guidelines? Yeah, so um, there aren't any newer laws per se around live captioning, but like you mentioned, the FCC is definitely um, a major standard that you know um, we at 3Play abide by. And um, there are definitely laws that you want to be aware of if you create online video content. So. Um, one of them being the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, which was one of the first major accessibility laws in the US. And it has two sections which um, specifically impact video accessibility. So you have section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, which is a broad anti-discrimination law that um, requires equal access for individuals with disabilities. Um, and that applies to federal and federally funded programs. And then you have section 508, of the Rehabilitation Act, which um, requires federal communications and information technology um, to be made accessible. And the interesting thing about Section 508 is that it um, specifically references the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, um, and that's the international standard for making digital content accessible. So um, what's unique about the Rehabilitation Act is that captioning requirements are written directly into the law. And then you also have the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA, which was like the second um, accessibility law in the US. And it has two sections that um, impact video accessibility. So you have Title II, which applies to public entities. And then you have Title III, which applies to um, places of public accommodation. So that, that includes, you know, um, doctor's offices, you know, library, museums, hotel, restaurants, and things like that. Um, and the context of a place of a public accommodation has been tried in many lawsuits um, in regards to how it impacts internet only businesses. And in several cases, um, Title III has been extended to the online space. So, for example, there were suits against um, lawsuits against Netflix, um, both in regards to um, closed captioning and audio description, and both cases where the outcome was that Netflix had to provide accurate captions for their streaming shows. Um, and their um, Netflix original. So if you're creating online video content, it's important to be in compliance with these um, major laws and standards. Yeah, and I think if this past year has taught us anything, it's definitely that you know the online space, while it might not 
you know, exist. It definitely still is a public space, just like anything else. Yeah. This is where we live. It's where we learn. It's where we laugh. It's, uh, you know, it's one and the same, basically. So that all makes a lot of exactly. sense. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I guess one thing you mentioned earlier, 3Play obviously does a bunch of different captioning uh, services. You have uh, tra transcribers, you have stenographers. Um, but more recently, 3Play has been sort of rolling out its automatic speech recognition software. Uh, for, for someone who's tried a little bit with automatic uh, softwares, I've, I've got some kind of varying results from some different companies based on our tests. Um, but how does 3Play's ASR tech uh, work? Yeah, so um, automatic speech recognition or ASR is um, just one of the steps of 3Play's um, captioning and transcription process. So at 3Play, we recently upgraded to um, Speechmatics version 2 as our ASR provider, which ranked um, the highest in quality in our most recent state of um, ASR report. Um, and um, we annually conduct research on the leading ASR engines with um, specific regard to captioning accuracy. And you can see more of our findings in our latest ASR report on our website. But um, one of the reasons we produce this research annually is to make sure that we're using the state of the art highest performing ASR technology for our, you know, um, transcription process, our captioning and live captioning process. Um, and our research team has also developed um, project level um, learned mappings where we're applying the human edits from our post-production captioning process and applying those where appropriate to ASR, um, delivering, be delivering better accuracy than possible with any ASR only solution and automating um, inclusion, of, inclusion of human edits. So while ASR technology continues to improve along with our machine learning training and mapping capabilities, it's still um, inefficient to stand alone without human customization. So the best ASR systems can achieve accuracy rates in the high 80s um, and even the low 90s if all the, if all the conditions um, align perfectly in their favor. So um, this can be achieved from, you know, there being only one speaker, if the speaker is reading from a very clean script, if the audio recording is high quality, um, and if there's no background noise. But even accuracy rates of 80 to 90 percent are not sufficient for captioning. So um, by including humans in our captioning process, we're able to guarantee our customers a 99 percent accuracy rate, which is the industry standard. And that's definitely the best of both worlds. You have the computer, yeah. you know, the AI, whatever it is, doing the, the heavy lifting and then the human eye there just to keep an eye on everything. Uh, that's great. And one thing that we've kind of come up here at FiveTool with our captioning tests and applications is the dreaded proper noun game. Uh, you know, especially when it's fully automatic, it can be pretty difficult to, you know, get someone's last name or a town or who knows what. So can I do anything if I'm using 3Play's uh, speech recognition software? Can I do anything to teach it those names ahead of time? Yes. So automatic captions have, um, you know, the unique ability to minimize deletion errors, which means that the ASR is able to capture all the words, but um, the ASR may create more substitution errors or inaccurate words, like you were mentioning. Um, and so a word list is a custom feature that's unique to 3Play that allows you to um, submit a customized list of terms phrases, acronyms, and proper nouns to um, improve the visual accuracy of the ASR on those words in your live stream. So when users submit a word list for their, um, for their live event, the ASR technology listens for those words detected in the live stream and it captions those words exactly as given in the word list with proper spelling and punctuation. Awesome. That's what we, uh, we like to hear around here. We've done some tests in the past. Uh, the town name where we're in right now is Norwood. And uh, without that word list, it came out as Norway. So definitely can be a bit of a difference <laughs> when you're, uh, you know, sending uh, proper nouns to a system that hasn't been trained to uh, expect those words. Um, For so that's sure, awesome. yeah. And um, lastly, kind of my last big question here before uh, we, we keep on moving with the program. Um, but what would you say to someone who is interested in captioning their content, but, you know, it's very technical and there's so much out there. And yeah. what do I, do? What, what would you say to someone who wants to start captioning, but just doesn't know where to start? 
Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I would say to someone who's new to the captioning process, I know it can seem like a really daunting task, but I would definitely start off by visiting Three Play's website, um, www.threeplaymedia.com, and checking out some of our free resources. We publish a ton of um, free blog posts and webinars on everything you need to know about closed and live captioning, um, including ways to get started. So um, we share tips on like the pros and cons of you know, DIY captions versus outsourcing to a vendor, how to budget for captioning or get funding, you know, how to champion for captioning and accessibility at your organization and, and honestly so much more. So we're really all about giving our customers um, a peace of mind by simplifying the video accessibility process. Um, so if any of the viewers are interested in learning more about 3Play and our services, or if you simply have a question, you know, our team is here to help. That's awesome. And as someone who spends a Good amount of time on the three play site on the three play blog there's a lot of great content out there um, even if you're just trying to learn more about captioning i can definitely uh agree with that three plays website is a great place to to start that journey and uh samantha thanks so much for joining us uh you know i'm sure Thank it's a busy day me. of course i'm sure it's a busy day back <laughs> in the office um i'm sure there's a lot going on so the fact that you were able to take some time out and talk about captions with us uh really means a lot to me and the rest of the team. So thanks again. Thank you for having me. Great. And uh, with that, I think that's been the end of our featured guest segment. Uh, like Samantha said, you can learn more by checking out 3Play Media's website. And uh, that's about it from me. I'm going to turn it back over to my main man, Tyler. Hey, I dig it, buddy. That is great stuff. Honestly, really great interview. Uh, Samantha knows her stuff, that's for sure. Spitting out the laws, knew every single one of them. That was uh, fantastic, to say the least. So, yeah, again, th thank you, Samantha, for, for jumping out with us today. A really cool interview, great deep dive. And now we're going to keep moving on on the program, as Josh just alluded to. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a peek at a kind of a really cool story that I teased last week. I actually thought we were running this video last week, but it was because we've done so much work with Spalding as of late. It was a different Spalding shoot. So this week we are going to be giving you kind of the behind the scenes look at what it was like to go on site, just Connor and myself, for a story with the Wang family uh, at Spalding Rehabilitation. Take a peek. This way. What's up? Can you just wave at the camera? <laughs> nice. Send an emails. <laughs> <laughs> Just an awesome time on site. We were at Spalding, then we were also at BU, as you saw right there, on their Nickerson Field, which is just a kind of a cool stadium that overlooks the water. Um, really cool shoot, but we should hopefully they will be promoting that. I don't know exactly what their release date is, but as soon as it does go out, we'll be sharing that as well on our Facebook page, which is where I hope you're watching right now. So stay tuned for that when that does get released. So uh, kind of continuing on, one of the things we always love to have on the show is the news, take, keeping up with kind of the latest tricks and trends in the industry itself. And the team kind of dives into all of the above. So here it is, it's the news. Hello everyone, and welcome to another weekly installment of Create Smarter News. I'm your host this week, Connor Clarity, stepping into uh, Josh's booth this week, taking over a little. Josh is behind the board, you know, his, uh, his old alma ma mater, as we call it. Uh, and continuing in the uh, theme of last week, we're going to start off a little cold open. I'm sure you've heard Black Widow debuted last week, uh, Marvel's, you know, female feature film. It's now the first Marvel movie to debut on Disney Plus and theaters on the same day. 
uh, as part of their Premier Access program, which they've been doing over COVID and the pandemic to uh, up their streams. I think it was $30 per movie. Uh, but this was, again, the first movie back in theaters and on Disney+. Plus. And dare I say, they did quite well for themselves in the financial region, uh, garnering $60 million in sales on Disney+, Plus, $80 million in theaters domestically, and $78 million internationally. So not too bad of a payday for Disney. Uh, this obviously shows that how a film can be successful both in theaters and on streaming. Uh, so it begs the question, will Disney continue putting things out uh, only on streaming? Uh, theater, a company, maybe streaming taking a back seat in the future. And will uh, you know other companies like Warner Brothers, will they follow suit and do both streaming and theater releases at the same time? We will only see, but you know what? For us cinephiles, more movies is better. So let's continue that trend. Hi, guys. And um, like always, joining me this week, I have some good buddies, so let's bring those pals in there. Today I'm joined by Jason and Phil. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, thank you. Always a pleasure. Honor, to be honest. Um, and now I'd like to throw it to Jason. I hear you got some news about our favorite social media platform, TikTok. Yes, I came across an article very recently called TikTok Made Me Buy It. There is a now big trend going on where influencers will be recording like their reviews of any simple product or coming up with cleaning methods, uh, like recipes for uh, meals to cook, and whatever it is, and it becomes viral, those products end up selling like crazy to the point where you can't even find them on the shelves. You have to get them on eBay all priced up or you can be smart like a 15 year old kid opening up in a store in New York City where he sells everything you see on TikTok. And it's all because of viral videos on TikTok. Like we've seen it in the past with Facebook, we've seen it in the past with Instagram, YouTube. Like for example, the fidget spinner was a huge thing for a couple months, very hard to get it because everyone was selling out. Now you can get one within a day because like it, the trend is dead. But with TikTok, it's completely different now where, one, you don't have to be a YouTube creator where you have to go out, buy a camera equipment, use editing software to make the video. You could take your phone and do it. It'll reach a larger audience as TikTok is now the new big trend. And um, you can do it all on your phone, which is the big part about it. You can film it on your phone, you can edit it through the app, and you can stitch it so you have a side-by-side -side view. You can remix it so you're talking on top of the video. There's all these different ways to make these videos go viral. And TikTok even has their own algorithm where it starts off as just a few people see the video pop up in their For You section. And then if they interact with it, it'll go to their connections. They'll interact with it and so on and so on and so on to the point where it's gone viral. So... Um, Actually, uh, so TikTok is also currently working on their own uh, shopping, like in-app shopping. And it's, uh, I think right now it's going through Indonesia and one other company where it is becoming successful and it's going to be coming to the U.S. soon. But TikTok's uh, counterpart in China called Doyin actually does this right now. And in their first year, they netted $26 billion off of e-commerce sales. Um, so now I'd like to throw it over to Phil and see what he thinks about uh, all the new TikTok trends making everything sell out. Yeah, I think, you know, a really interesting thing about all of this is, you know, just commerce and how it ties into social in general. I think last week on this program, Marissa uh, brought up the fact that the is basically saying Instagram is no longer a photo sharing app and they're focusing on creators and video and shopping is part of that equation too. And I think, um, Ultimately, you know, social media and influencers are always going to be driving purchasing. So the the integration, the direct integration to make that happen naturally of right in that in-app experience is kind of the next step. So right now, while maybe just viral trends are making people take notice and say, this is a cool product that I'm going to buy and all of a sudden it's not available anymore. That, that really interesting next step for brands, I think, is that in-app commerce to say, well, how do I make a commercial that people don't realize is a commercial because I have an influencer promoting it, but at the same time, let people buy it very, very, very quickly and take that one step directly from that video to my product. Um, and that's the next evolution of things. And you know, you don't even have to say, oh, how, where do I find this? It's directly at your fingertips. So I think there's a lot of untapped power there. I, I think 
the whole landscape of social media generally is changing. I saw a post today about LinkedIn jobs and LinkedIn resume, excuse me, TikTok jobs and TikTok resumes. So there's, you know, a whole push for um, companies to be posting jobs on TikTok and people to be submitting their resumes to companies via TikTok. So not only can you shop there, you can find your next job there. So you actually have money to shop. Um, concerns about, you know, privacy and submitting, you know, resumes for our, for jobs via TikTok probably will come up. But anyway, before you know it, you're applying for jobs, you're buying everything you need, everything's happening through TikTok. So I think one of the many interesting kind of evolutions of uh, what's, what's going to be a very important platform for a lot of uh, brands in the next couple of years. Honestly, I didn't even know about the TikTok jobs, but um, honestly, I'm not surprised. TikTok first started off with making uh, like songs and dances become hits where now you could go on Spotify and listen to a whole entire playlist of just viral TikTok songs. Uh, the, for example, the song Dreams by Fleetwood Mac came out in 1977. It just hit the number one on the billboards during like the beginning of TikTok because a guy rode on a skateboard drinking ocean spray cranberry juice, which boosted the sales of Ocean Spray to the point where they gave him a free truck and a lifetime supply of Ocean Spray, but also took a song from 1977 and made it a number one hit. So seeing that and then now making sales, uh, sales of products huge, the jobs honestly doesn't surprise me. And that's probably going to be the next big thing. And then probably in the next couple months, you're going to be seeing everyone talking about getting jobs on TikTok. I think the key for marketers is really just thinking about all of this and making sure you don't don't, don't go down the wrong path and try to do this in a way that's inauthentic if you want to be on TikTok and you want to try to leverage these things. You know, the reason the, the video you're referring to, the Ocean Spray guy, worked is because it just felt random and weird and it didn't feel like, you know, Ocean Spray was involved in that. But then, you know, they can jump on after the fact. You, you can't force these things. They've got to be real and you've got to have people who understand how to actually use these platforms if you want to be on them. And that's the first step. Don't don't be fake because people will see right through it. So uh, it's easy to jump on these things, but make sure you're doing it in the right way and and not faking it. Yep. Yeah, that's a great uh, you know little segue. If you guys aren't following Five Tool Productions on TikTok, get on it because there could be an internship right around the corner. Who knows? You know. But with that, thank you, Jason. I really appreciate that. Great topic, and um, I might have to go buy some new kicks or maybe a new cool hat uh, on TikTok. Who knows? But next in the news, let's talk about Google, the big powerhouse of information. Obviously, with a lot of trends nowadays, they've turned to TV. So Google TV has announced a new Watch With Me series uh, starring various celebrities uh, where they'll tell you about a couple of their favorite films and you can watch it with them and they'll tell you all about why they like it and their favorite parts and yada, yada, yada. And um, so that's a cool little thing for you know a, a weekend uh, or with some friends and this could also introduce users to new movies as well as uh, encourage them to watch more films on Google TV rather than switching over to another platform. So for Google, it's a very smart idea. And, uh, and they say Google TV, uh, again, I've never really heard of that. I've heard of Apple TV, but Google TV's algorithm is pretty good about showing you different films and keeping you on the app just like they want, kind of with that bandwidth and traffic. Um, so with that, I'd like to bring in my good friend Phil. And uh, we were actually joking earlier a little today uh, Google TV, Apple TV, all these kind of new, uh, you call them streaming aggregators. That's not how you yes, say that. Aggregators got, are I've, streaming. I've got a lot of thoughts. Got a lot of thoughts about this. I am what I consider to be a Google power user. I've got a Google Pixel. I've got Google Homes in my house. I've got Chromecasts all over. I had never heard of Google TV until you sent me this article. It's pretty cool. It's actually a pretty useful service, right? It, it basically just aggregates your streaming services. So. If you've got a bunch of different streaming services, it kind of puts it all under one roof. That's helpful, but also it feels like we're getting much closer back to this just being a cable provider. It's like, oh, all the best channels, you know, helpfully curated under one roof. Okay, well, we've done that before and we all decided to move away from it. Now, obviously, we're getting back to it. Specifically, whatever, that's a different topic. Specifically with what you're talking about with the, the Watch With Me series, I think it's kind of a cool idea. I watched the, the video that's kind of the headline here, and it's interesting to hear, you know, the actors or celebrities talk about their inspiration, you know, how, how movies or shows that they've watched have inspired them to change the way that they act. I originally thought it was going to be more of a mystery science theater type deal where maybe you could, uh, you know, watch along with them and they'll comment, you know, like, a, you know, the director's cut behind the scenes sort of thing. But it doesn't seem like it's that, which would be a lot more fun, I think, unfortunately. No, I agree. I'd love to see a couple of your, your favorite celebrities down on the, let's see if I could do, they're a little here, you know, little, uh, 
a little joking. Like I said, I think that's a good idea. peanut gallery throughout the whole movie, right? Exactly. And you, know, and you know what? Maybe Google will see this and they'll say that's a good idea. But, but I agree with you there. I was actually looking into it and HBO Max and um, TCM, if you still watch that, uh, has done some of the stuff where they'll take directors, they'll take celebrities, and they'll take actors. And like you said, that kind of roundtable conversational, how'd you get into acting and what inspired you? Me, as a movie fan, I think that's amazing. And I, I can totally see why Google would try to do something like this. Um, and that video that they showed to kind of tease it uh, has an actress I've never heard of. Uh, she's from uh, Orange is the New Black, I believe. But you know, these smaller actors will be bigger, I'm sure, in the future, or they have their own niche following. And that'll, you know, uh, gather fans to go right to Google TV. And once you're in that system, again, you're going around the different apps on Google TV. And like you said, if it has all your other streaming apps, why would you ever get off of it? And uh, so long story short, I think it makes a lot of sense why Google would even come out with something like this. And I think it's a great idea. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, saying that, I don't have Google TV, but uh, you know maybe this will be one step forward of why I should get it or something along the lines of it. So, it makes a lot of sense to me. But, but yeah, you I would watch like your to... own. Uh, you can watch your own mystery science theater, Connor. Just watch your favorite TV shows and movies, and just chime in and chirp at everybody on screen all along the way, and just see who joins you. Just see hey, who tunes in. For that. I was gonna say you should see me on a Saturday night. You know, while the kids are out <laughs> clubbing, I'm watching some old movies, talking. Wow, James Dean. How do I get that haircut? <laughs> But with that, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I think we had some really good topics today and uh, great conversations. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching. Um, and that is another installment of Create Smarter News. Shout out to Josh for uh, doing the switching and me for uh, letting me get on the camera for once. It'll be kind of cool to do this again in the future. Uh, so thank you guys again for joining. And if you enjoyed, see you next week on Create Smarter News. <laughs>